Hi everyone, it's Helen here and thank you very much for joining me for another Christmas in July. I love Christmas in July and today we're going to be making a beautiful Christmas mini album using my um, album dies and my brand new papers and it's going to fit into this box here, this little shadow box there. So there is a tutorial already done for this one. I don't know whether it will be out before this album or afterwards so keep your eyes out and make sure you are subscribed down below. The die set for this one is the large shadow frame box. I'm going to move that aside now. We'll come back to that later. So here are the new papers we're going to be using today. If This is the Winter Sparkle paper pack and that goes with the Winter Sparkle collection and uh, it's 12 by 12 you get 24 single sided sheets and 250 GSM so that's going to really add some nice um, sturdity to your pages and we're also going to be putting together the large album die set now it's the large album die set that fits in that shadow box there so I've got everything cut out already and I'll be quickly going through the cutting guide and then we'll start with our sticking and our gluing and with mini albums you tend to need a lot of cardstock and so I've gone for the soft lavender foundations card I love the foundations card range from creative expressions and um, you'll probably need around about one pack at least one pack to do a mini album buy two um, just to make sure that you are covered and you're not going to run out so um, I'm serious there make sure you have enough card whenever you're doing mini albums make sure you have enough card Okay, let's jump straight in. There's one thing I do need to say with these mini albums is the way they fit snugly inside the shadow box. If I take this page here, this does fit inside very snugly so there's no room here for tabs and tags coming out of the top or the sides if you're having side pockets or if you're having a top pocket there's no room there for the tags however I can show you some other tricks and things that we can do there if you still want to have a nice interactive um, insert to go inside your pocket so let's go through the cutting guide very quickly so this is the large die set there I've had a good bash with it this morning doing all of my die cutting so you get the main page die here you need to die cut six of these now this is specific to this album that I'm making I have other videos using this album um, die and I've done it in a few different ways so today for this album you need six of these you need this is the page die we'll come to that afterwards you'll need one of those so I'm gonna pop them here so you can visually see one of those and with this one here you're going to need three of those so I have my three here and we're going to be popping this into um, a portrait album if you want to do a landscape you can do you can have that on its side we have the guide marks here for you to cut the binding so that it will fit the um, album on its side okay and then to complete the pages and to start our front and back covers we're doing our covers a bit differently um, you need to die cut oh sorry manually cut eight of these I'm just going to write the measurement down for you it needs to measure nine inches by six and three eighths of an inch and you need to cut eight of these so six of them are going to be for our die cut pages that we've just done here and the two remaining ones are our front and back cover and then what we're going to do is going to we're going to add some chipboard cover so I have one cut out and prepared here it's the same measurement as the nine by six and three eighths because it slips into the um, the shadow frame box perfectly and then I'll be showing you how I cut this one today I'll be using my paper trimmer for this and I will link a video down below with I think it's three different ways on how you can cut your chipboard nice and easy it also goes by the name grey board as well if you are searching for it I tend to get mine from eBay that's uh, in the UK um, I know Amazon will probably sell those as well if I can find some links for different grey boards and things like that I will link them down below right so let's get assembling I have five of my pages already done here they're going to be top loading pocket pages 
and the edges are going to be popping onto the binding. Okay, so let's complete our last page. So it's done all of the score lines for you. So we're going to fold those down. Use your um, bone folder as well. Get those nice and crisp like that. Okay, grab your glue. I'm going to be using Cosmic Shimmer. I know uh, Scotch Quick Dry is really good as well as, um, oh, what was the other one? It will come to me in a moment. So I'm just going to add the glue here. I'm still trying to think of the name of that glue. I have used it. Is it Dark Room Door? Um, it's going to really bug me now. Hang on a second. Okay, let's have this mystery. You can pop it down below. I can't find my bottle. I think I have used it all up and it has um, been thrown away. I think it's Dark Room Door. Um, but if you know which one I mean, pop it in the comments. And also the Collal glue as well is really good for this as well. And let me know if you do have a favourite glue in the comments down below. It's going to be perfect for all these quick drying glues are really good for all of your 3D makes. Okay, so that is our last page done. So this is going to be a six page album. Pop those together, pop those aside. Let's work on our binding. So we have the large one and three of the narrow ones. So all we do is just fold these up. Do the same for all of these as well. Use your bone folder definitely for this. So this is going to create our outside bit of the spine on the outside. These flaps here are going to attach the front and back cover and the centre bit here on the inside is what's going to hold these three binding strips here. So there's enough here um, if you count them for six pages. Okay, so those are all done. Now let's get these popped in. So we're going to be starting with the middle section first. Middle section as in the, the centre here. And I've added no guidelines or score lines or notches to help guide you because they would be visible. They'll be visible and handy for you to use, but then they'd also be visible on your finished project. So if you think you might need to practice this, if you are completely new to this, then have a little practice a few times just getting everything straight okay it needs to be straight because if any of these strips are wonky say like that then your pages are going to be wonky too so the most important thing here is straightness you can have varying different um gaps between all of these when we add them that's not really going to be too much of a problem but the first thing you need to do, your priority here, is straight, up and down, vertically. Okay, and you can use these score lines here to really help you get that in the right place. Now these last two, these are going to go into the equal gaps here, right there. Do your best there to get them straight as well. And then you can also try and get even gaps in between the pages too. The more you do this, the easier um, it will become and the quicker you'll become doing this as well. So I can see that's not straight. And having like the um, even gaps in between really does help to kind of line everything up as well. You can see where you're straight and where you're not so straight. And once you're happy with that, press that down. There we go, there is our second piece. We've just got our last one now. You can really see how this spine system is coming together. Okay, I wasn't gonna edit all of, all of that out. I was silent there. I hope you don't mind some of the some people like the silent gaps actually that it's not really nice listening to a youtube tutorial i think where someone is constantly talking and they're afraid to kind of have any quiet gaps i like the quiet gaps because you're just watching and you're just relaxing you know i like to watch youtube and craft tutorials and things like that to relax also to learn but 
ultimately I want to relax at the same time. Okay, so there is our spine system done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set that aside and leave that to dry. And now we're going to quickly work on our chipboard. So let's get that cut. So I've got my pages here. As I said, it needs to measure nine by six and three eighths of an inch. I've got one prepared already and I've used some wide tape, double sided tape on both sides. And I will link this tape um, down below. It's from Amazon. It's my favorite for this sort of thing. So let's get this cut down. I'm gonna have to stand up for this one. I'm getting the big boy out here. There we go. This is my Fiskars bypass trimmer. Love this. I've had this for a very long time. So let's make our cut here. First one at nine inches and the second one at six and three eighths. And then I like to keep some of these off cuts as well because they can be useful for spines and, and extra things like that. Okay, so that Fiskars, um, I will leave that linked down below. Um, it cuts through the chipboard. I've had mine for absolutely years. It hasn't blunted. And then straight afterwards, you can cut thin paper. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. It's my absolute most favorite trimmer ever. And I have a few trimmers. Okay, so let's pop these on. The easiest thing to do is pop this on along this one side here. Grab your ruler and then do that. Oh, can you hear that noise? I'm not sure if the uh, camera's picking that up, but they're cutting the hedges out the back with the big tractor. So obviously that's gonna be a little bit noisy. Okay, so I have my edge to head edge here, edge to edge on this side. This is quite important. And then I'm gonna go right up down the middle. These little gaps I'm fine with. And then use your ruler again just to cut that. Okay, repeat it on the other side. Now it's quiet down now. I think that was just a big gnarly hedge that they hit there. Okay, now we have our front and back covers done. I have, um, where are they? Okay, here they are, two extra pieces. That is what um, is going to go onto our mini album to create our front and back covers. I'm just gonna power through this. Sorry guys if the noise bothers you. And then we're going to pop this on the top and then I'm going to address the next stage with probably with another two of these as well. But little little details like that can be done as we work through the album. Okay, so let's get our pages on. So we're going to start off with these two pieces and we're going to attach them just to the back here, just like so. So just add your glue just to one side here and all of these little notches and cut out bits from the numbers they're going to be hidden completely so they're not going to be visible at all okay so it might be easier just to slide this under and then just double check by turning it over have it in the right place. I can see here I just need to push that over ever so slightly. So again this is very different to some of my other assembly tutorials so it's always worth watching because I do try to get a little bit of um, a varied assembly for you each time so I'm not making the same album again and again. So now what I'm going to do is just repeat the same on this side then we can start working on our pages. Okay, 
okay this is a very very flimsy album so far but by the end of it it's going to be nice and sturdy okay there's no upside or downside yet until we put the pockets in so always pay attention to where your pocket openings are because you don't want to have half of your pages with pockets at the top and then half of them below okay so we're going to start off with our first page here and it's up to you whether you want to decorate your pages before you pop them in or whether you want to decorate your pages after you have a complete album to play with so I'm just going to add glue just to the first um, binding strip glue either side Oh, I can really smell the greenery. I think they're cutting the grass as well. I can really smell that coming through the window. It smells really nice. And I'm just going to slide that on while it's quite flat until it kind of meets the bottom here. You'll, you'll feel it at the bottom there. And then line it up top and bottom so it's in the right place. Just turn that over, just double check everything. And once you're happy with that, that everything's lined up along here along here and you can just about see the score line here you know that that is in the right place another hazard is I've been doing a lot of gluing today so I've got loads of little dry bits coming off onto my project okay so let's do the second page and then I'll do the rest off camera so it's exactly the same and again, after you've done this a few times, you'll get really good at this, super fast and super accurate as well. Um, definitely. I've seen a few people um, starting off with using this technique. Um, not being so neat to start off with, but then as they share their projects throughout the times, as the months go on, you can really tell the difference especially with how things are lined up and everything so the first aim is to get it all nice and neat as soon as you can really but don't don't worry if your first few albums do turn out wonky if you're new to this you will get this is one of those techniques where you will get better and better and better at it as you go along okay so these are all lined up just like that and this is really addictive as well this is such an addictive hobby to have making loads of mini albums there are a lot of fun to make especially as each one is different loads of different pages that you can choose okay so I'm going to carry on adding the other four and then I'll be right back to show you the next stage okay so I'm just adding my last page here just testing this against the front there that's all lined up lovely super pleased with this and there we have our album it's nice and sturdy in the center because all the cardstock here has been doubled up to make the pages it's a little bit thin and flimsy here but that's fine we are going to work on that right now so let's add our pages so uh, sorry our chipboard I'm just going to grab my pokey tool. And uh, these can be popped into the recycling bin. taking them off one side okay I'm leaving that side on and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this on like that line everything up and then stick that on there we go okay so the reason why I'm making this sort of cover is because oh, also a wrapped cover like a traditional let me show you a wrapped cover like this one I've used the medium album for this one and as you can see it 
adds too much dimension on the spine here at the top and the bottom. You could try and make it um, your wrapped cover um, the same size as all of the pages but then you'd still have this extra space here um, going into the shadow box and that might um, not fit. So I'm going to keep this very plain here. I'm just going to cover this with to reinforce it with some cardstock and um, keep the front and the back hard covers to make it that little bit more durable. Because once you add your chipboard covers, it really does make a huge difference in um, how the book feels because there's that um, added weight. And then once you've got all of your pages matted, it's going to feel even better. Now if you've made these books, um, mini albums before, you will know exactly um, what I mean by that. So let's get this last one on. Lining up, going straight up to the score line. Just lining up here with these corners. And then press that down. There we go. And now we have a really, you can hear that, a really nice, sturdy album. Isn't this going to be the perfect size for storing all of your Christmas memories in? I think it is anyway, and there's loads of extra room here for the pockets as well. You can pop loads of things in there, and I have so many die sets now that coordinate with the um, the large album to help you decorate and make interactive pages and have um, all of that fun. Okay, so I've cut an additional two of these measuring nine by three sorry nine by six and three eighths so in total you need to cut ten of these just had to quickly add that up in my head and I've got some mats here as well and I will leave the mat um, measurements for these it's all going to be in the description box and if you click on the link for Helen Griffin .co.uk everything that I'm using today and um, all of the measurements and this video will all be in one place on my website so that's probably the easiest place to uh, get all of the information for this album okay so I'm going to stick on my remaining pieces let's take all of these off and if you want to kind of disguise the grey along here you can ink the edges as well I would I would choose a nice little purple ink or something like that to just kind of help blend everything in. And again, if you want to do it this way, you can. and if it's not a perfect fit and you have something showing again ink it and that will hide everything there we go is that a nice book there look how nicely that is coming together I love that and I love this color it reminds me of the color of my bedroom when I was a teenager the color, I think it was called they call it damson I think that was the color dulux it was a dulux color in damson Okay, now this next bit is super important, especially if you have pockets, because you do have the choice here of, here they are, no, it was upside down, you do have the choice here of gluing these closed and just having a really nice sturdy page, okay? Um, so now I know my pages are at the top and my book is the right way round, I'm going to add the covers. So I've chosen these two from my paper pack, just another quick look. Here it is, this lovely 
some lovely patterns here. We have the silver birches, we have these lovely semi-circles there the, uh, overlapping, the lights, the snowflakes and the lovely pattern there and also the, the grey wood grain as well. I love that. That wood grain is going to go really nicely with um, the, the shadow box. Okay, so we can have them going this way or we'll have them going downwards. I think I have them going up upwards like that. And I'm not going to use any other extra dimension because I want this to fit into the box. Okay, so these mats here can also be used the same dimensions for the inside as well because we'll need to cover this as well but that's going to be for a, another video where we'll be decorating this album as well right let's get this last one on and it goes this way because the branch is going upwards okay there is our back cover on look at this i love that and then i will also leave um the dimensions on the spine as well i'll do that off camera because i'm wondering what i should use for that i could repeat that would look good but then um i've definitely got some off cuts from lots of things so i'm gonna choose maybe the wood grain i think but i'll do that off camera because this video is getting rather long and i'll leave the dimensions for all of the mats down below and uh, moment of truth does this fit it will fit i know it will because i designed it to fit so this pops in there like that so here we have just a slight gap here if you did want to add a little bit of dimension of layering up things i know we have the the winter scenes here that you can layer i love this you can layer the winter scenes on the front here as well that will fit snugly just make sure that it doesn't go above this gap which is round about a quarter of an inch okay so that is the large album that fits into the shadow box now everything is linked down below everything is also on my website helengriffin.co.uk there is a link that will take you straight to that page so you don't have to go around um, looking for it it's all there so in my next video I'll be decorating the inside of this album and also the cover and watch out for the tutorial for this shadow box as well you can turn it into an album box you can turn it into a shadow frame I love that and there's an ant here I haven't finished it yet because I'm still making my samples you can make it into a gift box as well I love this lovely presentation box I've got a mini bottle of wine here I've got some dividers here as well and here so this is an absolute wonderful little present that you can give to someone perfect for any occasion not just Christmas okay so that's enough showing all of my samples I hope you really enjoyed this one please do join me for part two of this album decorating watch out for the tutorial for the shadow box uh, subscribe in the corner there you can click the icon that will subscribe you and just make sure you don't miss any of my Christmas in July videos because it's my favorite time of year and I've got lots of projects to share with you guys so thank you very much for joining me today give me a thumbs up if you like this one and I'll see you all again soon